Welcome to the mini lesson on regulation of muscle contraction. At this point you should have some understanding of the mechanism by which a muscle contracts. We call that the cross bridge cycle. Um, and if you need more information about the cross bridge cycle you may want to view the mini lesson on the cross bridge cycle. Of course the lecture notes and the textbook also contain a lot of information about the cross bridge cycle. But if you remember from the cross bridge cycle, we were left with the question of what prevents the cross bridge cycle from happening all the time, um, which would mean that a muscle is contracting all of the time, and that would be relatively inconvenient. Um, remember that themes in our class are structure and function, but related to the theme of function is the concept of regulation of that function. So the analogy that I sometimes use is imagine a car. Uh, it's one thing to understand the function of the engine and the transmission and uh, the parts of the vehicle that actually uh, put power to the rear wheels so that the car can move, which is what you basically want out of a car. But imagine a car that had no controls, no steering wheel, no brake, no throttle, just had an on-off switch. Uh, you turn it on and it goes as fast as it can possibly go until you're ready to stop using it you turn it off uh, that car would be useless so I give that analogy to emphasize the importance of not only understanding a mechanism like the cross bridge cycle uh, which explains how a muscle contracts but also understanding uh, the mechanism by which that function is regulated so we were left with the question of how is the cross bridge cycle initiated and really how do you relax a muscle? What would prevent a muscle from contracting all of the time? And those are the questions that we will answer with this mini lesson. What you see on the right is a picture from your textbook uh, and you will recognize uh, some of the elements of this picture uh, because we've talked about the protein filaments that are found in a muscle, um, namely myosin, the thick filament that's sort of the, the redder purple in this diagram, and the thinner filament uh, referred to as actin, uh, which is sort of the, the pale blue color in this diagram. Um, and those are the primary protein filaments that are involved in the cross bridge cycle. But you'll notice that there are two additional protein, uh, proteins in this drawing. One is called troponin and one is called tropomyosin. Um, they are involved in the regulation of muscle contraction. And what you notice is that the tropomyosin is arranged in a very uh, specific way and that is that it twists around the actin uh, in a spiral arrangement uh, and it specifically lies right on top of the myosin binding sites. Remember that part of the cross bridge cycle involved the myosin cross bridges um, reaching across that gap and binding to specific binding sites on the actin filament. Well, essentially by covering up the binding sites, the tropomyosin is interrupting the cross bridge cycle because it prevents the myosin from binding. Without the myosin's ability to bind, the cross bridge cycle cannot uh, proceed. So the question then becomes, uh, how do we initiate the cross bridge cycle? In other words, if we want to relax a muscle, we just leave tropomyosin wrapped around the actin in a way that it covers the myosin binding sites. So how would we actually initiate the cross bridge cycle? Um, by moving that tropomyosin. So what you see uh, in this particular slide uh, is a picture taken from your textbook. Um, and I understand that the font may be difficult to, to read in this particular diagram, but this picture uh, is in your textbook. So if you need to um, see the font in a slightly larger size, please uh, reference your textbook. Um, but what's important here is uh, the illustration of the relationship between the proteins. You'll notice the very top picture 
so shows the cross bridge cycle at a uh, particular step namely the cross bridges are energized and they're ready to reach across that gap grab onto that actin and begin pulling the two filaments past each other that's the cross bridge cycle uh, and we also refer to that as the sliding filament mechanism but the troponin uh, I'm sorry, the tropomyosin is lying right on top of those binding sites and interrupting the cross bridge cycle. So if we wanted to take this muscle from a state of relaxation to uh, uh, and cause it to contract, we have to move the tropomyosin. Remember that uh, the shape of a protein is critical to the way that the protein functions and often changing the shape of the protein is an important part of its function. So if we can change the shape of that tropomyosin so that it slides out of the way, then the myosin uh, binding sites will be exposed. The other protein that is involved, I've already referred to it, it's called troponin. And you can see that troponin uh, is attached to the tropomyosin. If calcium binds to the troponin, the binding of the calcium to the troponin uh, causes the troponin to change shape. When the troponin changes shape, it's going to cause the tropomyosin, which is attached, to also change shape. And when the tropomyosin changes shape, it slides out of the way of the myosin crossbridge and the myosin crossbridge can then reach across that gap and bind to the actin and then the crossbridge cycle can proceed as we've already seen. Remember of course that uh, an inorganic substance binding to a protein and causing a shape change, uh, a, the example here would be calcium binding to troponin, uh, that process is referred to as allosteric modulation uh, and we've seen many examples of allosteric modulation. It's one of the ways that proteins change shape and it's one of the ways that um, mechanisms, physiological mechanisms are regulated. So here is another example of that um, broader phenomenon. Once the tropomyosin is uh, removed, the myosin binds to it, the crossbridge cycle proceeds. Now, the questions that I, I hope you are asking yourself now are, this is all well and good. We now understand why the crossbridge cycle would not proceed all the time and how a muscle can be relaxed or contracted as necessary. But haven't we really just moved the problem back one step? Uh, calcium shows up and binds to troponin and that initiates the crossbridge cycle but where does the calcium come from and how do you get the calcium out of the way so that the tropomyosin can move back over the myosin binding sites and interrupt the crossbridge cycle to allow the muscle to relax after a contraction and those are excellent questions because that's the next step in our process of understanding muscle physiology where does the calcium come from how do we release it into uh, the actin and myosin the sarcomeres when the muscle needs to contract and how do we remove it when we want the muscle to relax and those questions will be answered in a mini lesson on excitation contraction coupling